How are you doing today, Tyler? You doing good? I am doing good. I'm doing just as well as I was yesterday. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. What's really good, Pastors? Welcome to another episode of Love, War, Challenges. I am MTV Malik. He is Tyler Louder. What's really good, gang, 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 gang. We'll go ahead and just jump right into episode five and go right into the elimination. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's be transparent why we're going so fast today and everything. So we not only did we record, but we also had just a jam session. We were just talking, getting to talk to each other. You know, we haven't done it for a couple of weeks because we missed it last week um, due to personal stuff we had going on. And Two hour conversation, no record at all. But it was a good conversation. It was a great conversation. I was, and I remember thinking, I was just like, man, this episode is really good. And it's just like, ah, oh, shit. And there were so many things you were like, good thing my wife doesn't listen to this because Black Sable. Right? Thing. And it was funny and it was good. And I was like, this is one she's going to listen to. And the universe had other plans for you. So the universe has your back right now. Right. And you know what? We could all use a little bit of that, a little bit of good karma our way. So I got a little bit my way. I'm going to wish a lot of good karma your guys' way. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right into episode five. So episode five, we get to see Carver enact a little bit of revenge. Got Brandon, got Leroy into elimination. Uh, how do you feel about, you know, Carver taking out her revenge? You know, I, I think we was talking about, about this yesterday. We felt like it didn't really need to come to this, but it did. And Carver took full advantage. I mean, it was a situation where I think, I think everybody involved took a shot too soon and the retaliation i mean to be fair for Kara, like she has to retaliate right away because if she doesn't she's just letting them like just saying like it's okay if you keep throwing me in whatever you gotta you gotta go right back at them so i think that was a smart thing on her part to kind of go and do um it, it we talked about the move i didn't think it was a smart move from brandon at the time um you know but we see we see leroy try and really keep the peace is what he's really trying to do here unsuccessful um but you know Kara's outside of the week that she was you know thrown in last you know two weeks ago she's been in the power of voting every single time so it's just weird to take a shot you know and miss 100 percent. come at the queen uh you best not miss i definitely feel what you said about brandon because he's not getting anything out of this you're losing a number somebody who you was in line with and you're taking a shot at somebody who, I'm, granted, if you're going to take a shot, you do want them to go against somebody like Rachel. But right. at the same time, they come back, they're going to be pretty pissed. Either one of them is going to be pretty pissed at you. So there's really no upside to it. Um, Leroy, I understand his position. He's going to ride or die with Cam. Um, you know, it's, it could be really, really great. It could kind of screw you up at the end. Uh, they get put into elimination. This elimination is called Mission Improbable. Both the challenges are going to be suspended with, you know, I don't know what you call this maze. It's like a ball maze. But we've all played it as a kid. It's just, it's a very classic survivor um, game that they have on on one of their um, immunity challenges. They always have this sometime in the middle to the late of the season. Uh, they're not suspended above the air, but they they just have like a board that they got to try and balance and get multiple balls in. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's one that not everybody um, everybody could be familiar with, but not everybody is a hundred percent prepared for to do. Um, and fun fact, uh, facto, and we'll talk about a little bit what happened earlier in the episode in a little bit, but the elimination learned a little bit that it was a best two out of three, and Brandon actually came away with the victory and, and well, yeah, set one of, if, if these speculations and rumors are true, again, I don't dive into Spoiler City, um, I don't dive into whatever their name is on X or Twitter, I have them blocked, <laughs> so I don't see anything. Um, but this is just the stuff that I heard, and that's kind of where the editing came in, where we saw Brandon look like he was, you know, four balls to one on Leroy, and then also Leroy Kyle. Absolutely, you know, and this is a time, you know, people talk about, you know, the editing and this and the other. Some people like it, some people hate it, some people could wish it could be better. I think we kind of benefit from this because they build a narrative that, you know, Brandon had this huge lead and Leroy came from behind. It, it felt great to watch. It felt good mm -hmm. to watch. Um, so even though if that may not be the case, I feel like this is the kind of creative editing that is okay for the show. And I don't really mind it as much. Or do you feel differently? Do you like, do, do you need the truth to see how they really performed? I mean, it's, it's, um, we learn more about this stuff at the end, which is, it's kind of cool because it gives us reasons to listen to other challengers and follow them and everything outside the show. Cause like we learned like when Jordan went against, uh, that guy from the UK or Australia, um, on the last season 
it actually went three rounds. It wasn't just sure. like a one to Kieran. Yeah, it wasn't just a one thing. And so, I mean, Jordan went in depth of talking about all the things that happened. And I was like, man, they should have shown all that. It would have made his victory even that much better. Um, and this same thing, if we would have saw, they could have fast forwarded it. If we would have saw Brandon win in like a minute, it'd be like, oh, man, he's out, you know. Um, the dramatics of it, I'm okay with it. Uh, it's a nice little nugget to learn at the end. Uh, no, nothing really nothing really hurts out of this. Um, and then, you know, Leroy gets his victory. Brandon goes home. You know, he made a, a bold move, and it bit him right away, and he's out. <laughs> Instant karma. Now, Leroy was talking about, I mean, he took Adam's um, star, and it was pretty simple on reason on why he would take Adam's star, right? It was, yeah. It was like two weeks ago. Now, what do you make of Derek's decision to sit out? I think, well, he's already went against Brandon once um, back on Cutthroat. He got eliminated, sent home right away first. I don't think he wanted to do it. I think it's a strength thing, so he didn't want to kind of go there. And I don't think he wants to compete against Leroy in the same thing. Um, I think if this was an endurance thing, though, I think Derek could have sat down and potentially work to both of them if it was like you know something that's going to go for like over an hour um i think you really would have been able to have benefit there but i think it's smart to kind of play it slow everybody's talking about you got to go in got to go in but we remember back on um uh dude i struggle with some of these uh total madness season 35 whenever we get to these like 30s i kind of struggle with some of the names of them because they're all over the place but total madness we saw ct go i'm sorry early just cause... don't mind me i just no, realized i wasn't bringing bring any up. jewelry but but we see guys like CT go in early because you think you got to get your star. And we see Tori and we see Wes and Bananas. When really, you can wait till the end. There's never been a moment on this show so far where somebody hasn't had a star right before the final and TJ just goes, bye, go home. It's never happened. If it does, that that's a risk I'm willing to take. Because, you know, I'd rather be on 10 episodes and get paid for 10 episodes than to go home in episode two. If I'm going to be there... If I'm going to be there, I'm going to make some money. So um, I don't think it's a bad decision. Now, let's talk about – let's let's rewind real quick before we go in there. We see right after the first uh, elimination of episode four, Kara comes out, starts talking um, to Cam, and Leroy's you know, trying to get to peace and everything. And we talked about this yesterday, so I really wanted to bring it up. I think Cam made a very bad gameplay move by not tucking her tail and telling Kara what she wanted to hear. Like, well, I thought Kari could be a little bit more understanding too. I thought she was a little I, aggressive there. I agree with that as well. I don't think Car- I, I. I think I think Kara's like I understand her being like not. I don't want to call her unstable, but it's like not like focused on like working. It's just kind of like because she's got all this emotion from getting thrown in against pe- from people that she thought she could trust. So she's got these emotions going, and I kind of get it. I think she could have been more calm about the whole thing, but Cam. I told you this yesterday. Cam should have just told one thing to Kara's face and then immediately cut to a confessional. It should have been like, I wanted Rachel gone. You're the only person that could have done it. And then if Rachel would have came back, I would have said the same thing. I want a car gone. You're the only person that could do it. That's what I would have said. And then cut to me in a confessional almost immediately. And I go, nah, I want them both gone, but whatever makes her happy right now, I don't want her coming after me. Like, Cam has this facade where she has to be cool and tough and not afraid at all times from anybody. That's not realistic. To be the only person in the world with zero fear, that's not realistic. Like, she should be like, crap, Kara's probably going to come after me and not going to give me exactly what I want. Like, yeah, probably. And Kara is a good person to have on your side. I didn't feel like they've gone too far. I mean, yeah, they took a shot, but I felt like it was fixable. I felt like a couple of kind words, a couple of understanding. Like I said, I thought Carver could have been a little bit more understanding there. And I really thought that you're 100% right. Cam could have been a little bit more. (sighs) I'm having trouble with the exact word, but, you know, she could have humbled herself a little bit. And I know. Yeah, that's that's, that's the right word. That is the right word. And if you look at this, too, from from if Cam was breaking down Carr's perspective of who she wants in the final. Kara goes against strong people. So if you look at it, there's three spots for females. Well, Laurel and Cam are the two closest to Kara. That's who she'd probably want to go against. And I get it. You don't want to lose to Kara in a final. But A, I'd rather be there than not. And B, if you want to take somebody out that's a big final threat, get them out when there's five left or four left. You know what I mean? Pretty much when they don't have game after that. Like if you try and throw them in at four and they come back anyways... 
Who cares? You're running a final against them. Against five, right. all you got to do is beat them in one daily, and you're good. You know, so it's the 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 risk reward isn't there. Now, fast forward back to the elimination. Leroy said, "I'm gonna take my star. I'm gonna take it from from Adam." Um, and uh, Cam can go get hers. She's a big girl. She can go down there and get it herself. You know, she she she's tough. Do you agree with that decision, or should Cam, or should Leroy have played the politic and like gave Cam a star? No, I think he's 100 percent right. Uh, right now, at this point, stars are more of a liability than anything else. We really got a couple more episodes before they really start to matter. I'm really excited when we get to the end of this game, and there's going to be a couple of people there just like, well, you don't have stars. There's going to be somebody who's going to have a star for a long time, and it's going to get taken from them right before they go in. Uh, I'm not rooting for anybody in particular for that to happen to, but I think it's going to be really exciting to see. I can't wait to see how that plays out. I think it's really going to send a lot of these Challenge fans, you know, it, it's going to bunch up their shorts. Very big term, but all reality, I think he's 100% right. A star this early is more of a liability and a target than anything else. Mm -hmm. So let's skip seven days and fast forward to Leroy struggling to read a script um, and it was really abso humanizing. Absolutely great. Absolutely great fantastic. to watch. Um, and I also think the challenge should do more of this. I mean, you know, you get the challenge after show. You know, we got in a couple of times where they go through things, but I would love to see more behind the scenes stuff, hear more producers talk. Uh, we get these little vignettes every once in a while, but I think it should be more, uh, the, the more they pull back the curtain, the better. WWE right. is realizing this. When they, oh, you know, man, put people in the writing rooms. Yeah, they put people in the gorilla position and they're talking about it pretty openly, which is, you know, 20 years ago, would have never heard of, but it's Ten they're doing ago. even better now because of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, if people that don't, if you're not a WWE fan, which I feel like there's actually a pretty good connect between challenge fans and WWE and everything, but I what they're agree. doing is they're taking people in the backstage interviews on camera. And normally what they would do is they would cut, go to the ring. You'd see an entrance and everything there. Now what they're doing is they're doing a flawless transition. The interview's over. They're painting to the right, seeing somebody else talking to somebody, hyping them up for their match, and then they're following them to the ring, getting a back view of them entering and seeing all the fans. It is cinema. It is fantastic. It is beautiful. Um, and peeling back a little bit of these layers really opens up the show, and it gives fans that love this show even more of a reason to love this show. 100%. Now, when we open up the episode, we get two shows that are available in the Challenge household. That's uh, Steve in the Wild and Aces in Places. In your opinion, what do you think is going to be the better watch? What would you prefer to watch? I, I'm going to stick with what, what I think on this is that if uh, Steve in the Wild is the TV show you want to catch every week because it's going to be crazy, it's going to be wild. But as soon as there's a commercial break, you're going on TikTok or, or Facebook or whatever, and you're watching a short of Aces in Places to see where Ace is sleeping at now. And so <laughs> that, that's a blend of where it is. Uh, Aces in Places is definitely going to be my go-to. Just the amount I respect people able to take naps Flawless. I wish I could get more than three naps a year. That would be great. So Aces in Place is the one I'm rooting for. Let's go ahead and jump into the daily. Uh, today's daily takes place inside a stadium. It's called Take a Seat. Basically, it's played in two parts. The first part is like a stadium musical chairs, which I think is pretty okay. You know, it's kooky. It's a lot of running. Get to see the challenges, do a whole lot of stuff. The second part is they got to run into the stands, find tokens. If you survive, you know, the, the first half. And then you got to put up these weighted boxes. <sighs> I did like the musical, the musical chair section of it. I didn't really think the second part was really needed. Or it should have been maybe just a little bit better it, it, if it would correlate a little bit better to the first one. What was your take on today's daily? Did you like it, not like it? I'm okay with staged dailies, especially, I mean, I, I, I'm a big Survivor fan as well. And Survivor does this all the time where in their challenges you'll start with eight, only four advance to stage two and only two advance to stage three. Like that's very common. And so I, I like these things. We've seen them a lot on the challenge too, where they do this, but they don't really just like eliminate 10 seconds in. What they do is, you know, you get an advantage and it was only 30 seconds, but I, I liked that they kind of screwed them over because it was like, how hard are you willing to run to try and earn an advantage? You don't know what it is. They just said advantage. 30 seconds is an advantage. I mean, in the second stage, if you ran up, to the right spot right away, you probably could grab that 30, that token before the other group gets to go. Like somebody like Derek, who was so impressive. So, so great. Fast. He's really showing out. 
he made it look like he should be on the mainstay show and he was running with a bunch of senior citizens is what it looked like. He was so <laughs> much faster than everybody. Um, and if he wasn't paired up with Jasmine, he would have had that advantage um, in moving into the second round. We see Kifla try and push himself, hurts his leg. Um, and that really hinders him later on the episode. We see Brad going crazy because uh, he doesn't know how to count seats and there's an open seat and he doesn't know what to do. And Laurel's freaking out on him and uh, coaching him. And Brad's really having a bad two back-to-back episodes. Yeah, he's having a, you know, it's funny because he's having a really bad run, but he doesn't really seem to be in danger that much. No. And w- w- I don't know what you attribute that to. I mean, I know he's likable. Um, there's a lot of cast members that go back with him you know, for a while. So I think some of that is really carrying him somewhat because his performance just has not been there. Well, let's see. He's he's done a show with pretty much everybody, I think, except for um, Avery and Jay and maybe Flora and Kiefer. Like, besides that, he's done a show with everybody else. So... He's, and it's been a long time since Brad has been, you know, a villain in the household. He's been a very likable guy for for a long time. I would say it all depends on where you stand in comedy. But he he was a <laughs> villain on um, on Vendettas for me against Marie, but uh, a Maria. Really? I, you said him a villain? I think you so. Said Marie the villain in that in that. Nah. In that uh, as soon as she on, said. She... As soon as she said, you want a piece of me? And threw pizza on him while he was, like, hooking up with Britney. I was like, oh, man, she is gold. Put her on every season. She is gold. I thought it was good to watch, but I definitely understood, you know, Brad's position on that. On, oh, man. I, I, I can't believe you don't need all the pizza. It's this. not fair for everybody. Uh, sorry, buddy. Be here eating pizza and first. like. I mean, that's a good point. Who made you the fucking pizza police? I mean, some people, I mean, for me personally, I would have looked at it and I would have quickly done the math on how many people, how many pizzas we have. And I'd be like, okay, I can have a max of three. Everybody should get three. And then I'll get a fourth if somebody doesn't want their third. Like I would have done that right away. That's me. So you you would have been great on the island. That would have worked out really well for you. For me, I would have gotten my rations and then I would just would have waited. I'd have been like, I'm a man. I should have more protein. No, I wouldn't, oh, have, I, I, always wouldn't have, <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. Dunbar is always a villain. I never would have said always that. Always a villain. All right, so moving on to this daily, um, Nicole and Ace gets Nicole and Ace gets the the win. Uh, and also, before I jump into it, I I just super love. Hey, make your own pairs. Figure this out. You know, yeah. I really love when they do that. And I'm really really high on Derek this season. Uh, I know that he wants it. It's great to see him, like really perform the way that he should have always been performing. You know, sometimes the challenge doesn't always highlight your best attributes. And I really feel like he's shining this season. It's great to see. Great to see. I mean, uh, but outside Nicola of battle, this win. I was like, outside of battle of the seasons, he really doesn't get a chance to showcase. He's only, normally out really quick. Last All Stars, right. he was out pretty quick. Um, all of his other seasons, he's like first or second elimination, so he doesn't really get the chance. Um, and then when now when he has battle of the seasons, we really got to see kind of something, but he was still new to the game. Um, but here we're really seeing him kind of stand out like him and jay are both guys that are standing out we'll talk about jay a little bit later when we get to my um power rankings uh but they're really standing out for people that you probably wouldn't have guessed at the beginning of the season i mean you know um derek has been really really strong on the challenge mania appearance circuit do Mm -hmm. you think that's been helping him somewhat it helps socially it helps with people liking you it helps with you getting on the show because if people are wanting because MTV can say what they want that they don't look at other things, but obviously they do because they're constantly looking at our YouTube channel to do whatever, because apparently <laughs> us giving them free publicity is a terrible thing. Um, <laughs> get at us on the biggest bands in history video. But anyways, um, I think they really follow those things. It's like, Oh, Derek's in a lot of these challenge manias. He's in these, doing these podcasts. People are constantly viewing and wanting to see him. Let's put him on the show. And you know, he's connecting himself. Um, I think he's a very likable guy and very easy to very get along with. Like I've had the I've pleasure never met of him, meeting but... him a couple of times and mm-hmm. he is just hilarious fun. And it's easy to gravitate to somebody like Derek just because, right. you know, he's a very positive, nice person, great conversation, hilarious. I like, I can't find, not only can I not say, and I'm a, I'm a surly New York. I can talk shit about anything. Like I have right. nothing bad to say about this guy. And I, and I dare you to find somebody who does. But moving on, there is a surprisingly large losing group on this one. And uh, Veronica, Steve, Jazz, Derek, Keefla, Tina Brad, Laurel, Cameron, Lee are all in it. 
this is going to be a double elimination. One male, one female. Uh, definitely love to see. Once again, um, Ace and Nicole gets the win. And the middle group is going to be Cara and Jay, Avery, Adam, Flora, and Ryan. And I really like this for Cara. If she's on a tear, she has a lot of help there. Want to go ahead and move into the nominations. Cora easily leads this. <laughs> Let me take that back. She doesn't lead this. She is the loudest one. She has the biggest axe to grind, and she's trying to protect a star. Somehow, she's able to get all of these star holders into elimination. And well, How does Adam, that make you Adam, feel? I mean, I think it feel, it's smart because we're seeing this is like a this is like chapter or like part two because part one was no star holders go in protect ourselves let's stay safe part two is star holders go against each other and then i think pretty <laughs> i think what part three is going to be is it's going to be okay i have a star so i'm going to send in a star holder versus a not star holder that way i'm safe you know that's what i think this is going to evolve into um, that makes sense you put down a star holder no nobody's going to be booking yours right right it's like, it's like oh they have to take theirs or the person wins they don't get a second star because they didn't take it from anybody so i think um we might see that kind of happening the the voting thing, we really see it really um, take a step up. Car is really pushing. Ryan's pushing on against on the other side, which is interesting because they're supposed to be working together too. Um, Flora is pretty mad at Car, but um, Avery is kind of struggling. And we see Adam go, wait, who who can't say Jasmine? And everybody's kind of like, oh, I can't. And he's like, what the hell? Who can who can say Jasmine in this house? She's the I most love connected his reaction person. to that. I and love his Jay, reaction to that. It clicked. And I love how he kind of put it on himself. He was just like, you know, all of you guys are talking all of this, and, you know, it's silly, and he really pushed to get Jasmine put in. And I really like the fact that he did that. And, and really, he just played his own game when he came there. He's, I mean, this doesn't really affect him much. He just doesn't like how this alliance is going, and it doesn't benefit him any. So why do anything to help them? I And I and also, it made Jay click in his head, and I think Jay was always kind of going with Kara because they're working together. Um, and what I, we didn't talk about this, we said it yesterday, but it's like Kara's working with Ace, Kara's working with Jay, um, Nicole's working with both of them, but Kara and Nicole aren't working together. They should be. But um, <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah, but uh, with Avery, I I feel like there's a lot of like backlash for people saying Kara like twisted her arm, bullied her, picked on her to just. But I think Avery made the smart move because Kara has a star. Kara wins dailies, or Kara's in the voting group. She's rarely in the bottom. If Kara gets thrown in again, and Avery, you just did her a favor, she has nobody else in this house really on the female side, she might give you a star because you helped her out if she goes back in. Like, those are these long-term things. Like, I would try and be on the star holder side until I stole their star. That's how long I'd be on their side. Plus, Avery doesn't exactly have a whole bunch of friends in the house. She's kind of on the island by herself. And guess what? Timmy with Kara is not the worst idea. She's shown to be loyal. She's shown to, you know, get it done. She wins dailies. Why not? You think you think Cam is going to, you know, put you in the top three, top four in her alliance? I never understood how people see an alliance and just don't fall into another alliance just to oppose it. That's really should how it goes. And that's how a lot of these classic rivalries end up being made. Well, I'm not on your side. Let me go find a side that will take me. Mm -hmm. But Kara is able to get it done. Uh, uh, Cam is super annoyed, which I do like Cam, but watching her annoyed and her facial impression, she does it she really, really well. She got outplayed. This is the difference between a really good challenger and the best female potentially in the top five of all competitors of all time. That is the difference right there. Sure, Kara might not have 25 connections and she might not be best friends with everybody and all this stuff, but she knows how to maneuver and play this game. There's a reason why people call, you know, Johnny Bananas a snake or they call Wes a weasel. You know what? They can slither and sneak their way into these spots. Car Maria is adaptable. She's a chameleon and she can do the exact same thing. She doesn't you know, get and I'm glad you say that she doesn't, you know, and she, and she actually gets slammed a little bit for her ability to be political. Uh, you know, her political game, you know, is not the greatest or whatever. But you know what? She's she's pretty much up there in a one man army kind of situation. And she could still get it done, even by herself and not having a whole bunch of help in that in that nomination. She still got what she wanted, pretty much she by always, sheer force of will. And that counts. She almost always does. I, I go back to, I mean, go back to uh, World of Worlds 2. She got, she didn't want, there was, Wes was making deals with the other side early. So they got Wes thrown in. Um, Johnny Banana, she didn't want to work with him. She didn't want Jordan, Jordan and Tori. She got her way. Everybody dogged that game because she didn't win. But 
But Every she time really kind there. of ran the house for, and, and a lot of people hated to see it because that's not usually the position. The position she's in now is where we usually see her back against the wall, got to fight everybody off. Uh, in all reality, is one of my favorite versions of Kari because she's a beast. But let's go ahead go and jump out. into this elimination. Before, right before you know, one quick thing. She can go home yeah. next episode if they do, and I think that she's still played a fantastic All Stars four game. She could win the whole thing, and it might, nothing changes. And no matter where she places in this season, she's playing a fantastic game because she has no numbers and she's still getting things done. Yeah, and 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 you said it. If back against the wall, not a whole lot of help. Even if she does got to twist somebody's arm or do a little bit of threatening, she's still getting the results. And the results is her getting her payback on everybody who crosses. Mm-hmm. So kudos to her. Today's elimination is going to be called Rope Rumble. They're in a pit. It's a line in the middle. You got to get the rope to the other side. Um, we didn't talk much about Keith Lynn, Steve, but them going in, that was the easy choice. So yeah. going into it, I was like, oh, man, this really could go either way. And then I heard somebody say that um, it was Adam. Steve is a wrestler. Yep, and, it, was, it was Adam. And yeah, oh, it was Adam. Mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've wrestled, I've done jujitsu. One of the things I know in combat, if you're in a street fight and the other person doesn't know how to wrestle and you're a wrestler, you're probably going to win. If you know jujitsu and the other person doesn't, if you're not trained in this, even slightly, even mm-hmm. if it was high school, always put your money on the other person. Keefler's up there in age, even though he's, you know, strong as an ox. As soon as I heard wrestler, Steve played it the same exact way as I did. Put him on his back, put your chest to chest, get the air out of him. Steve gets to a win. It probably looked a lot easy. It probably looked harder than what it actually was. Right. And I think if Keefler wanted to have a chance in this, he he didn't have a lot of leverage anyways because his leg was hurting, his quad was hurting. No. But he needed to make this a tug of war because upper body strength, he's way stronger than Steve. He could you know maneuver and everything. But when it's a, I'm allowed to pin you down and still drag this rope, there's nothing he could have done. And little thing about Steve is that Steve has now won two dailies and two eliminations. He has been fantastic this season compared to last. And nobody's talking about Steve as a contender. Um, I, we don't know how he can do in a final. So we don't know how good he can be. And so it, it's just pretty interesting. And he gets a star, um, but he doesn't give it to Adam because I think he wants to protect Adam right away. Um, so he gives it to who he calls Switzerland. He gives it to Ace because everybody likes Ace. I think that that's a really smart move because if Ace has it now, being for the fact that he was given a star, he's going to take it a lot less personally if somebody takes it or right. if somebody goes after him. And plus for Steve, hey, it gets one more eye off of you. Plus, you just won two eliminations. You may not be so easy to go up against. And now people seem to something. And mind you, this isn't just an elimination. This is something physical with somebody who was strong. Kefla may be a little bit old, but he came in swinging. He was winning dailies. Um, so I do think Steve deserves a bit more respect than what he's been receiving. Um, and I think he's a lot more beastlier than people give him credit for. He may be one of those guys. You might have to wait for a janky elimination to try to get him out, or it has to be something against his skill set. He's pretty fit. He can hold up his own body weight. He can run. He's pretty strong. Steve is a lot deadlier than people will give him credit for. Yep. But well, in, another big thing with Ace is Ace gets over things really quickly. Like Ace, like we remember on All Stars One, where like they all just like throw him in. For I, I still don't get it. I rewatched it. It doesn't make any sense why you throw him in because everybody's like, we love Ace, but you're going in. And then and he's just like, you guys are all monsters. And I think it's because of the way they, <laughs> they did it. Like it wasn't like a, we're voting you in because you perform bad, you know? Because that's the era, era Ace comes from. And then literally they throw a party two hours later. And he's dressed up and he's partying and he's like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, he just gets over right away. So you could take his star and he'd be mad at you, but then you could just make him dinner and he'll be fine. And like, yeah, he absolutely does not take it personally, which is also good because it probably protects his mental health when outside of the game. Plus, he hasn't been doing a whole bunch of challenges for a long time. So he's, you know, he's probably just looking at all of the positives. You know, hey, I'm on vacation. I got a chance to win a whole lot of money. If it doesn't work out, hey, at least I made a couple of grand and got to go to Africa. Right. Worst things. But the main event of this, it's definitely going to be the female side. Mm-hmm. Jazz comes down, is versus Veronica. Nicole sees this. She says, oh, yeah, I'm going to come down. Initially, saves Jazz, goes to Veronica, like, you're working with Cara. Veronica denies it. It was just a huge mess, but I love how it played out. I don't love the fact that she kind of went back on it, 
But I do kind of love the fact that Veronica just made a better argument and, and sold her point. What was your take on the, uh, I think uh, uh, Derek called it the triple plot. Yeah, so let's 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 highlight the key points. Nicole's mad at Kara because of what, how she's been playing and voting people in. But then Nicole goes in against one of those people that she wanted, like that Kara put in. Then um, we have Jasmine feeling confident and good to go, like she's safe. And Veronica just plays her cards. And Derek goes, "That's why she's a queen. That's exactly why she's a legend that she is, or an icon, or whatever he called her, because of those things right there." Even though Jasmine's his like number one, and she would go in, but for real, <laughs> like, and I don't, I don't care. I've I've already seen a bunch of comments and everything online, and people are really upset. Like, oh, you shouldn't be able to switch. Who cares? You're already throwing yourself into elimination and you get to pick who you go against. Who cares if it takes you 10 minutes to do until TJ says no, then I'm going to do it. Um, we've seen challengers in the past. Talk about it. You can either ask if this is a rule like, hey, can I only pick one and then I can't pick again? Or you can just tiptoe the gray line and <laughs> find a loophole and until they say something. So I mean, I'm TJ okay with flat it. out said you can change your mind if you want. And she does. Um, it's better TV, get- too. It is. It was great TV. It was great to watch. And the whole time, I mean, very little about the challenge shocks me these days. So it was mm-hmm. nice to be shocked. Um, and unfortunately, this elimination went kind of the way we thought it was going to go. Jasmine, you know, as as great as she is, as much power as she, she obtained, she's still undersized. She's still tiny. And going against somebody like Nicole, she kind of got, you know, wiped off. If so, this happened like five to ten years ago, it would have been over in like ten seconds. So we have yeah. to give credit to where Jasmine is at now versus where she used to be. Um, She's feisty. Put up much more of a fight than I think anybody gave her credit for. Um, and she agree. made moves in this season. She was very vocal and clapped back at people. And um, even though I don't think Jasmine's ever a person I think can ever win these shows, um, it'd have to be a really, it'd have to be the perfect final for her, like against two other people that I think that she could outperform. Um, I think that, this is one of her better gameplays and she stepped up her gameplay, stepped up her social social game, which she's already fantastic at. Um, and I, I think overall, this was like one of her better games, even though she went out midway, um, it's still one of her better games. And granted, I don't know if Veronica would have beat her in that elimination. I know Veronica is tough and everything, but like, I, mm-hmm. I really, I couldn't, I couldn't have told you who would have won that elimination. I couldn't. I agree with you. That one could have gone either way, either way. So, at the end of the episode, the star holders are going to be Cara, Veronica, Steve, Leroy, Ace, and Nicole. And w- do me a favor. Go ahead and give us your uh, top five. Are we still in top five? Or are we top starting to expand seven. the field a little bit? We're going to do top seven now. Let's do the top seven. Just give it to us now. We'll argue it at the beginning of next episode. Oh, no, no. I, I, got, I got like three minutes for you. So, we can. I'll give you a little bit, and you can kind of give me a rebuttal. So, at seven, we have Cam. At six, we have Derek. At five, we have Ace. Four, we have Nicole. Three, we've got Jay. Two, we've got Steve. And one, we've got Kara. Let me give you some reasons. Cam has lost both of her, two of her allies back-to-back weeks, although she's been in a good position either way. Derek has won two dailies in a row. And then I would say also with today. Cam, not only did she lose two people, this is two weeks in a row she didn't get her way. She didn't right. get to go into elimination, and she didn't get the votes to go all the way that she wanted them to go. Right. And then so then we look at Ace at five. Ace just comes off of a daily win. Nobody's really looking at Ace as a target. Everybody likes Ace. He gets a star because he's so likable. That's a win. <laughs> Nicole gets a daily win after um after having some okay performances throughout the season. Goes down, calls her shot, takes her star. If she wouldn't have went down, um, it would have been the worst move of the whole season. So she made the right move. Uh, then we Plus, move. also, she's getting a lot of camera time because of her relationship, yeah. and having Loru as a solid in your yeah. corner also works. And you're know, giving it more really time thing, now, too. Let's keep moving. <laughs> and then Jay's at three. I think this might be a surprise for a lot of people, but Jay is at three, and here's the reason. Fun fact, Jay is the only person that has not been eligible to be voted in all season. He's either been solid. voting or he's won a daily. So he's he's either getting first, second, or third on everything. And so he's the only one. It's a really solid performance. I think he's surprising a lot of people. He is just showing everybody what short kings are capable of. Yeah, and as I said before, Steve, he has won two dailies. Um, He's won two eliminations. He's proven to be more formidable than people were giving him credit for. Preseason, I think everybody, if everybody put out their own rankings, he would have been ranked towards the bottom of the men in probably the bottom three or four for probably going home early. And he stood out and performed. Um, And then number one, 
Kara is been reigning at top. I think all like this is her technically this is our fifth power ranking. So for four of the five power rankings, she's been first overall, and she will continue to be there until um, she gets eliminated. Personally, I don't really see a way that she falls off based on her gameplay. I mean, I think getting Kara eliminated, but I think the only thing, only way she loses this is in the final because one. You got to get enough power to get somebody like a Nicole or a Laurel or a Cam to go against her. That is going to be super, super tough. And really, the only way that happens is if one of those people are going into elimination and they call out Kara, which is, come on, even if you hate her guts, not likely. I am a big, strong, grown man, and I'm not calling Kara down in most eliminations. She'll probably wipe the floor with me. So I really don't see that happening. I really only see the only way to get out of, to, to get her through is beating her in the final. And that alone is a tall order. But as good as she is as getting to finals or whatever, we've also seen, seen that she's susceptible in the finals. The finals might be the place to beat her. She made a right. lot, but there's a lot that she didn't win too, mm -hmm. which I don't think makes her a bad player or whatever. I, I think it just shows how hard the finals she's been in. But also, that might be your best choice. Why go against her elimination? You might be able to beat her in the final because True. as good as she is, she is beatable in the final. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think we're done. I think we're, we're done. Great up. episode. Oh, up. man. Really ran through that. All right. Thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram. I don't have it in front of me. So, hey, once again, I am MTV Malik. He is Tyler Louder. This is Love War Challenges. Good night. Or good day. Who the fuck knows?